I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a tape on stereochemistry. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano. I'm professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific. I like to go over a very important type of question that you're going to see on the DAT exam, and that's to look at two structures and tell me what is their relationship. Are they identical? Are they enantiomers of one another? Are they diastereomers? So let's come around and let's have a look. I've done some other tapes on this, so I want you to check them out as well. In problem number one, I want to compare two things. One is in the Fisher notation and the other is in 3D. The first thing what we do is we label the group priorities based on atomic number. Bromine has an atomic number of 35, so that's priority number one. Chlorine is atomic number 17, carbon is a six, and hydrogen is a one. So we label the priorities. Now, if you go clockwise, it's an R from one to two. If you connect one to two and you go counterclockwise, it's an S. So as you can see, when you connect one to two, it looks like it's an S. But if group number four, which is the group of lowest priority, it doesn't need to be an H, but it's the lowest priority group. If it's on the horizontal, you switch your thoughts to whatever you think the answer is, it's the opposite. So we think the answer is gonna be an S because it's counterclockwise, switch your thoughts, and it's gonna be an R. So the first molecule is an R. Never eyeball it, you wanna always do R and S. So the same thing goes for here, this is one, this would be two, this would be three, and this would be four. Now when you're in 3D, if it's a dash on number four, that means you're in the correct frame of reference. If it's a wedge, that's when you reverse your thoughts. So what we're gonna do is we go from one to two. You do, or you are able to jump over number four. Never number three, but you could jump over number four to get to number two. So if you do this, it looks like an S because there is a dash. That means you're in perfect position. So that means that the configuration is an S. And as you can see, all the this carbon has all the same groups. So this carbon has a bromine chlorine methyl H. This carbon has a bromine chlorine methyl H. So if one's an R and the other is an S and the connections are all the same, that you ever moved any atom position makes it a stereoisomer. And if one's an R and one's an S, these are enantiomers. Let's do a more challenging question. Now, when you first look at this, you're very, very tempted to say that they're both trans and therefore they're gonna be the identical compound. Now, I think the best way to do these type of questions is always do R and S. So let's go to this carbon right here. I put a little dot and what's coming off it? We have a wedge with an OH. The invisible group is an H. Then this path going to the right, I'll call R1. And then the path going up, I'll call R2. The OH is priority group number one. The path going to the right has a branch point, which is an OH. So that's going to be two. Then R2 is three and H is four. I'm going to connect one to two. It looks like an S and thankfully it's a dash. So that means we're in perfect reference and therefore it's an S. If we go over to this carbon here, the OH is one. The group going to the left of me is R2. And then we have an H that would be four and going up would be my next group. And I'll call that R1 and that'll be assigned priority number three. Now, the OH is one. To the left of me would be the second priority group because it's got a branch. I'll call that two. Then the R1 would be the third priority and then the H but be careful now, the H is a wedge. So instead of an R, it's gonna be an S. So we have here an SS. You do the exact same thing for the next one. You got a carbon with an OH, there's an invisible H. To the right of me, I'll call it R1, underneath is R2. The same exact fashion, OH is one. To the right of me with the branch point is two, then three, then four, it looks like an R. Number four is in the correct position, so it stays an R. So that side's an R. And then finally, you got a carbon with the OH. There's the invisible H. To the left of me, I'll call it R1. Underneath R2. This is one. This will be two. Three, four, as we did before. It looks like an S. Because four is a wedge, it's an R. 
So we have an SS and an RR, which makes these enantiomers. If this was an SS and this was an RS, then it would have been diastereomers. But SS and RR represent enantiomers. Okay, let's go with another one. Let's go to the board. If I was to give you a 2-chloropentane, and I give you this, and I give you this, I think your best bet would be to do the R and the S on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is the, I'm going to go over to here, and the, there's the carbon. You have a chlorine. Then there's a dash. That's an invisible H. To the left of me is a methyl. To the right of me is an R group. You come around, and I'm hoping you can see this is a 2R. Now you go to this one. And again, I want you to focus on this carbon, which is here. There's the chlorine. There's the dash. It's an H. This path to the left of me, which is the methyl. I don't have to call it R2. I could just put that as in a methyl. And then this big path, I'll call that my R group. Chlorine's one. This is two. This would be three and four coming around. And you would see it's an S on carbon two. So you have a 2R and a 2S, which makes these enantiomers. Problem number four, they look very unlike each other. They look very different, but they're not stereoisomers, of course, because I've changed the positions. But the trick is, let's get the molecular formula. If you counted carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now to get the H's, what I like to do is put in what I call little cat whiskers. Anytime I see a point, a two H's. So I put the little cat whiskers in, and then this only gets one whisker, because carbon has four bonds. So we have two, four, six, seven, eight. So this will be a C6H8O. When we go to this, again, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbons, one O, and then I like to put my little cat whiskers, boom, boom, like this. This guy gets only one whisker, and this gets a whisker. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So both of these are C6H8O, which makes these constitutional isomers. Now, number five, we actually did a tape on this one. So if you want to go back to one of the tapes where I did this really slow, but I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. And what I want to do here is if I covered this up, we know the bromine is one, underneath me is two. And then this is three, this is four. It looks like an R, but because number four is on the horizontal, you switch your thoughts, it's an S. Likewise, bromine's one. Above me is number two. You go around, it looks like an S. Because four is on the horizontal, you switch your thoughts, you get an SR. You do the same thing to the other one, and you would see it's an SS. So what I'm comparing is an SR to an SS and they make diastereomers. I hope this helps and gives you a good understanding of how to approach these problems. I would also recommend if you're having difficulty, go to the David Klein textbook. I have read every single book in the United States, Great Britain and India, and of all the books, I would think the Klein book is the easiest and the most student friendly. So I always recommend it if you wanna see some good stereochemistry problems and do more practice, I would recommend the David Klein textbook. All right, that'll wrap up this clip. Hopefully you've understood what I said and you can do all the destroyer problems. Good luck to you. Bye-bye.